Hi folks, welcome back to our next video. Some of you just have no real concept about electricity, and especially 12 volt electricity and solar, and how it applies to your life in a van, living in an RV or a van or a car. So I want to lay a really simple foundation. Super simple. We're not, uh, the problem with 12 volt is people use terms that you don't know. It's a foreign language and it's concepts you've never heard before or you don't understand and they just say it over and over again in the same way. I want to try today to take it, make it so simple that you can see some concepts that will help you to understand 12 volt electric and then you'll understand how you can what you can do with electric with a solar panel with a battery um, and and how how it applies to maybe you could run an air conditioner but we'll make it really practical and simple for your life so don't give up okay now here's the problem uh, you, most of us think in terms of our daily lives as watts and volts. We're familiar with those terms. We don't know what they mean. To be honest with you, I don't know what they mean. I know the analogy. Don't send in me the analogy, the water analogy, the pressure, the force, volume, and all that. I, I know all that. But who cares? I don't need to know any of that stuff. I just need to know enough to make this thing work. And so we're going to start so simple that maybe you can start to make it work. So you know watts, you know a light bulb is 80 watts, uh, you know your, uh, your fan in your house maybe draws 100 watts. Uh, you know a certain number of things about watts that make sense to you. Uh, you also know volts, you know your car is 12 volt, you know your house is 110 volt. You don't know what that means, but you know it's true. That's all you need to know. But we're going to concentrate on a whole new word, which I think really throws the confusion into a lot of people. It's ampers, amp hours. And the reason that is so important, and you really have to learn amp hours, and some people try to avoid it, and that's a mistake. You need to learn to think in terms of amp hours. Is that the battery in your van, the house battery, is rated in amp hours. How many amp hours it holds, how many amp hours it gives out to use appliances in your vans. So if we, and in your RVs, if we can start to learn and understand the concept of ampers, the whole thing, I believe the whole picture will start to fall into place slowly, not right away. We'll just build on this one thing of understanding ampers in your battery and then we'll go from there. We're going to pretend this is a battery. But right now we just want to understand what is a house battery and what is an amp hour? What on earth does that mean? I don't know. I, you know what? Uh, yes, I know the analogies. I've done all the reading. I know as much as the average layman. But who cares? Uh, all you need to know is that you can do something with an amp hour. And that's what I want to visualize for you today. If this is a 100 amp hour battery, and that's very normal, we're just going to assume and pretend this is a 100 amp hour ba battery. And we're going to assume uh, that these quarters, I, I happen to have 100 quarters here, that's one amp hour. That's two amp hours. That's three. That's something you can visualize and understand. And batteries are often called a bank uh, because there's usually multiples in one. And that's a really good analogy. It just happens to work out that the money, it holds money. Your battery, that house battery, holds money. And with these amp hours, and this is one amp hour, you can buy things that make your life better. So we're gonna buy things with this amp hour. What can I buy with an amp hour? We're gonna continue with the bank analogy. If you have a bank account and, uh, and there's a penalty for taking, you have to have a certain amount in or a bank account or they start taking out penalties. Uh, but that's kind of gonna happen with your battery too. You have 100 amp hours, but there's a penalty if you ever take out more than 50 in one day. Your bank, your battery bank always needs 50 amp hours. It needs to have 50 of these quarters in it. So this is another 50. This is 50 and this is another 50. I'm going to dump them in. But I want you to see that this can never be spent or you pay the penalty. And what is the penalty? Well, in real life, it would be a few dollars. Uh, in your battery, it's damaging your battery. Every time you go below 50 amp hours, one of these quarters, you're damaging your battery and reducing its life. Going down to 50 does not reduce it. It's not damaging. That's what it was designed to do. Deep cycles are designed to go down to half daily uh, and then be recharged and do that over and over and over again. A good high quality deep cycle battery can do that 500 to 1,000 times. 
and uh, if you that's one full cycle from full to 50 from 100 amp hours to 50 amp hours and that's not damaging you go below 50 it's damaging the battery you'll pay a penalty for too much withdrawal now things are also rated there we talked about how an appliance might be rated in watts and volts uh, there is a simple formula and I'm going to put that formula up for you in a little bit and you're going to have to memorize this formula it's simple math um, and you can do that it's not that hard you just have to memorize this formula if I tell you how many watts something has and how many volts it has then you know how many amps it has and once you know how many amps it has you know how much of it you can buy because we're gonna buy things from our our with our amp hours and these things work now let's take an example of fan I have a fan here this is probably not like the fan you have this one's a, very, a little unusual it's the only one I happen to have with me uh, but I also have my laptop I have a laptop you probably have a laptop if you don't you certainly have a phone and your phone needs to be charged and it's got to be charged off of your battery and it's going to be bought charged with amp hours but you got to buy the phone has to buy the amp hours you got to pay it to get the amp hours that's what we're going to do now Let's say you have a fan and it draws three amp hours, three amps per hour. That's really typical. Uh, electrical devices are paid by the hour. Just think of it that way. Just like if you had a bank, a, a payroll account, and you had employees and they worked an hour, you'd owe them an hour's wages. Well, this works too, uh, and you're going to buy an hour's worth of its time working, and it's going to cost you three amps an hour. So I dip into my bank. I'm going to take out three. I've just bought an hour's worth of time on my fan. Say I'm gonna run it four hours a day. So I need to buy three, six, nine, this is gonna get higher math for me, folks. 12, 12 amp hours. That's how much it bought. This has gone out of the battery, it's not there anymore. Let's say my laptop burns four amps an hour, and that's probably typical. It might be more, it might be less, that's in the ballpark. And let's say I use it five hours a day. So it buys, I'm buying its work time at four amps an hour times uh, uh, what did I say five hours a day so there's one hour two hours three hours four hours so I've bought four hours worth of work on my laptop for this many amp hours. They're gone, they're not in my bank anymore, and they're never gonna come back. But one more thing about your bank. It, you never wanna take it below 50. You physically cannot put more than 100 in. If you have one battery with a 100 amp hour battery, which is very typical, you can never have more than 100 hours. And as you get older, its capacity will decrease. So now we have an LED light. This little LED probably draws about a third of an amp an hour, and I'm gonna run it for six hours at night. That's only two amp hours, it's cheap. It works really cheap. That's the value, wonder of LED lights is they just work really cheap. So it needs two amp hours. So I take two more out of the battery bank, out of the bank, I'm buying things. I'm just buying things, it's really simple. And then my phone. Uh, my phone draws a third of an amp an hour and I'm gonna charge it for about three hours, it'll be charged and that's enough for the day. So it only takes one amp, really cheap. That's a really cheap device there. That's why we love our phones so much. They take almost no electricity and they give us a phenomenal amount of service. One amp hour, really cheap, goodbye. Let's say you have a TV and it draws three amps an hour. Surprisingly, that is about right. And so it draws three amps an hour and I'm gonna run it for five hours a day. That's 15 amps total. So there's uh, my mythical TV, which I don't have out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I've bought uh, five hours of time on my TV out of my bank account, my battery account. My battery bank account bought all that for me. Man, I got a lot out of this battery, didn't I? I got stayed cool and comfortable. I had connections and internet. Uh, I have light and I have con more phone and connection and internet and all of this cost me 50 amp hours That's all I've got no more. I, I'm done uh, I Can't I've got to refill this battery now now Let's say I want to use more than this what you can do is get a second battery just like this one and set it here beside it and Connect them 
So here's the positive cable, positive to positive. Here's the negative post, negative to negative, and they are attached to each other in parallel. So now instead of having a one 100 amp hour battery, you have a bank. Back, we're back to that bank of battery thing idea. Now I have two, and I have a total of 200 amp hours. And the penalty still applies. If I ever take it down to 100, then I have to pay the penalty, and both of my batteries are damaged then. So I don't want to do that. I want to always keep it above 100 amp hours in my batteries, my bank of two. Uh, and then, but I can buy double this amount. Now there are three ways you can recharge your, your battery bank. The first one uh, is to have what's called shore power. That's a boating term. Uh, boats have been using electricity for, boats have been doing this a really long time, longer than RVers. And so we learn, a, borrow a lot of their ideas and names, and one of them is shore power. Shore power means you connect to an, a plug that's on the grid. And what you would do is go to a friend's house maybe and plug into his, his 110. Or maybe you would go to an RV park and, and plug into the RV park. That's shore power. The other way you could charge your battery, and you have to get a battery charger or a converter. If your RV comes with a converter, that is the charger. Um, or if you were in a van, you would have to go and buy a battery charger to plug into shore power. Or you could have a generator. So you could have a Honda generator, or you have a Harbor Freight $90 generator, or whatever generator you have, that's your shore power. That's your source of power to charge your battery with a battery charger. The second is you can connect to your, um, your, your starting battery, your alternator. That's a very good way to do it. A very, very good way. I highly recommend that. All of us should be doing that. Um, most of your RVs will come equipped to be doing that already. And it's probably all set up and you're already doing it. Uh, your van, you'll have to learn how to do it. And I'm gonna have a video coming out in the next, some, next month or two on how, on how to uh, charge your house battery from your van's engine and we'll talk about that. Um, so that's the second way. The third way is with solar. I have solar panels on my roof and that's how I'm charging my batteries. I have enough solar watts, volts, and amps uh, to recharge my battery every day. And so every day I can, I can buy this stuff every day. The ideal way to recharge your battery is with a uh, both. Uh, buy both, get, have an alternator, charging it off your car starter, uh, your alternator, your starter battery, so that every time you drive, you're charging your house battery, and the solar is every time there's sun, it's charging. Those two work together extremely well. They do not compete or conflict. They work extremely well. You want to overwhelm with solar. You want to have enough solar coming in to cover whatever's going out. Now then what happens is overnight, when there's no solar coming in, you're still taking things out. So at night, I have to have a battery bank that will keep me going overnight, and then the solar on the roof that will put it back all back in the next day. For the average person, if you have 200 watts on the roof uh, and 200 amp hours of batteries, you're, you're fine. And one more thing I want to cover really quickly, and that's the simple formula for converting, because you know things in watts. I have 240 watts of solar on my roof. Well, how do I know how many amps that is? I know what it's watts. Let's say it's a 12 volt panel and it's uh, 240 watts divided by 12 volts, because it's charging a 12 volt battery, uh, gives it uh, 20 amp hours. So that's a simple formula that if you know the watts and the volts, you can know the amps, okay? It's really that simple. 240 watt panel at 12 volt, you always divide by the ultimate source. You don't divide by 110. That would make it two amps. Uh, you don't do that. You divide by the source it's going to, and in the case, it's going to a 12 volt battery. Watts divided by volts equals amps. That's all you need to know. You don't need to understand anything about it. You don't know, need to know what a volt is. You don't need to know what a, a, a watt is. You don't need to know what an amp is. You, you, work is being accomplished for you by the hour, by your electrical appliances. Now, I'm, I'm making this very simple. There's a lot more complications to it, and over time you should learn all the complications. But this will be a foundation that can get you started.